Now welcome to another Weekend Ramble, where this time the topic is... what exactly? It's kind of going to be a summary of the leaks, the rumors, some of the official information, all leading up for Ahsoka. Because we have like, what, nine-ish days to go, something like that? Less than two weeks. It's sneaking up. Next Wednesday. Pipe train coming on down the tracks. Choo-choo. Look, even I'm doing it now. <laughs> I'm ready for this. I'm excited, I, I'm, actually. I'm excited, too. This is the most I've been excited for a show... I think since The Mandalorian, because I, I had my doubts about Kenobi. I wanted to be really excited, but I had a lot of anxiety going into that one. You could almost one. compare waiting for Star Wars shows like a drug this addiction, is... where you get this like crazy high, and then and then you got to come down. Some you know, Mandalorian lets you down hard. It was like, boom, well, cold three, turkey. Yeah, uh, season three was like, yeah, so going bad. cold turkey from good Star Wars. Mm-hmm. And or just kept you kept riding the yeah, anticipation. And or, it was exciting the whole and way or through. I thought it could be good, and then it turned out to be exceptional. I would say this, I haven't been this excited Did about the, like a show or series since Clone Wars season seven. That's when I was like, I was like super excited for that. Do you too. think your lower expectations really helped Andor shine? No, I think it was just a fantastic show. Though I have been asked that question by a lot of people. Like, did you go into that one just kind of not expecting anything? So maybe to maybe to a slight degree when mm-hmm. you're not like really kind of anticipating much of anything. But I still had hope for it, so I don't know. I feel like Dave Filoni has so much to prove with this show yeah. that he can't mess it up. I feel the this, same way. This I feel is like his this big is... live action debut with his characters continuing his story. Exactly. So he has to do this right. He has to, this has to be good, and I think it's going to be. All right. I really do. So, what we're going to go over is half fact and half, half fiction. fiction. <laughs> All right, so we're kind of going to go over where leaks and rumors came from that we've kind of discussed most of these on the channel throughout the time. Some of them are from, like, making Star Wars. There's some facts from Hollywood Reporter. There's the databank entries that were released on Star Wars to kind of give everyone a, this is where we're standing right now heading for the show. So you might not want to watch this if you're going to go into the series or you want to go into the series blind. Yeah, if you want to go in blind, then this is not the video for you. Though this is rumors and leaks and... Some of it's so confirmed. we don't. Yeah, some of it is confirmed, but some of it is going to be leaks and rumors. So we do not know a hundred percent if this is going to be accurate. But reading these things over, checking all these articles like I do, it only made me more excited to see these things play out. If this is how the series will go. Yeah, I would say if if some of these leaks and rumors are true, this is going to be pretty exciting. Hmm. Well, let's kick this off then. First, we've got rumors that there is another actress playing a young version of Ahsoka. We've heard this over multiple sources. That there's going to be plenty of like flashback sequencing. They're saying that this actress is going to be Savannah Sten. She was in Game of Thrones, The House of the Dragon. In which case, I feel sorry for Ashley next time because I feel like this should have been her. But what... I mean, I can understand why they're not having her play like a young mm-hmm. Ahsoka. I hope they, as much as I don't want to take away from this young actress and what is a, a great role, I kind of do hope they put Ashley's voice over her. Ashley deserves to be a part of this because she was. Yeah. This was her for so long. I mean, if they don't, I'll understand. But I kind of, I kind of yeah. want that. I kind of want Ashley Eckstein to soak a voice at some point in this series. And what you could do if it is a flashback, I mean, you could kind of make it like blurry. Like if she's looking through the world between worlds, it doesn't have to be like crisp. She could see like mm-hmm. it can be like ripply, and you can do some kind of CGI work on it and make it look kind of almost partial animation, if that makes sense. Right. And use Ashley's voice. I don't know. We've also got rumors of Hayden Christensen being in the show, but everyone's kind of been... I think that's like a 99.9% I think it's going to happen. Yeah, I don't know that... I mean, I feel like... I don't think he's going to be a big role. No, no, no. I think it's going to be this Visions sequence type thing we've heard about. I think we see him in this potential world between world sequence. I think a small chance at a Force Ghost. Mm -hmm. But I think think it's for sure. I mean, he's like an IMBD. It's been rumored forever. Yes. Of course Hayden's going to come back to do this, so... We've also heard the rumors from multiple sources that Darth Vader will be featured, voiced by, like, an AI James Earl Jones. That's what they did in Kenobi. Yeah. And that it'll be, like, a fully suited Vader. We're going to be played by Tom O'Connell. That He's getting a brand new suit, different from the one they used from Kenobi last year. Hmm. I know, like, in Kenobi, like, Vader sounded like Empire Strikes Back Kenobi to me. Like, because if you listen to the three movies, the three original, obviously, I'm talking about... There, there's a slight variation in them, and mm-hmm. I think the most intimidating is Empire, and that's kind of the one they went with. To me, anyway, that's what it sounds like. Shin's character was apparently, they say it was codenamed Astrid. That character was described as being striking and ferocious. It's that angry squirrel, squirrel energy, yes. Yeah. A formidable mercenary who must now decide between two paths. 
either the path of her unit or take hold of her own aspirations in service of her own glory. Hmm. Sounds That's like something that do. fits with the character. <laughs> Angry squirrels. Squirrels go off on their own and they seek out their own nuts. Also that Balon has a droid and an assassin by his side. This could be referring to the Inquisitor Morak. Yeah. And we have seen plenty of droids, so... Well, there's always... It's Star Wars. There's droids everywhere. All right, meatbag. <laughs> <laughs> well, they dusted off Hoi Yang. Why not, Leah? Uh, Why not? Well, maybe uh, HK-47. Why not, droid. right? The cyborg <laughs> droid character joke. is supposed to be named, like, Karnast? Karnast. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Carmax. People are saying it could possibly be some sort of remnant of a dark trooper. Because okay. they were, like, robotic. Gideon made them that way. Sure, but that was... That's very he recent. took out the human element. Well, yeah, this is going to be in the recent, so I want some why kind not? of, like, old droid dusted off the heap. You know what I'm saying? We do have rumors of Commander Rex being played by Tamora Morrison. I think this is another 99%er. Like, it feels like, come on, it's Filoni. Yeah. He's not going to put Rex in this? Get out of here. Jason Sandula with black hair? That's coming from Lego. <laughs> I, I want, J- I want green-haired no. Jason Sandula. Maybe he grew out of it. <laughs> Maybe that was a phase. <laughs> I mean, it was always kind of strange that he just his hair took on his mother's skin color, but... I don't know. I think you, you you put it in there, you gotta run with it now. I don't mm. want to change that color now. According to some of the plot devices and the plot structure, there are rumors out there that say Ahsoka's gonna have a mid-season time jump, that the Rebels epilogue will kind of take place in the middle of the season, that like there's gonna be four episodes and then four episodes. Hmm. The first part's gonna be it's like Ahsoka in the New Republic-centric stuff, featuring Mon Mothma, convince them about Thrawn and showing how the New Republic's already kind of failing, that her warnings are ignored, and about her relationship with Sabine, whereas part two is kind of supposed to be more about Ezra and Thrawn. Okay. Like, from their perspective or about finding them? Finding them. Because I've wondered, as I've talked about before, will we ever, will we actually see from their perspective while they're kind of, wherever they are, what's mm-hmm. going on with them, or do we not see them till... Till she gets there. Yeah, exactly. I think that's going to be how it's set up. Yeah, I could see that. But I think it makes sense because we've debated before, like, how much have we, what have the trailers and the commercials, have have they shown us, like, the first couple episodes? Are we, like, missing a huge chunk of the show? I think we've seen nothing from the back half of the episodes. I agree with that. We've also heard the rumor that Ahsoka's show is going to explore concepts that are going to be, like, carried into Skeleton Crew. They're saying, you know, Ezra and Thrawn are going to be in an unexplored area of the galaxy, which has been dubbed the New Beyond until there's some sort of official name. This region hmm. is supposed to have, like, religion and views of the Force that are different in magic users and stuff. <laughs> like the Night <laughs> Sisters. d here. Are supposed to originate from this place. Uh, yeah. People who treat the Force I, as more magical. I want to see how it's done. I am not we'll a, see. I, we've had a lot of debates about this. I've, I've kind of spoken my piece about not being overly fond of, like, going to, like, a weird new location. Mm-hmm. When we have so much galaxy to explore. But I, I'm certainly open to whatever... Whatever he's got in mind here. Could be cool. Yeah. I mean, the rumor is also that Shin and Morgan Elspeth have a connection to that place. Makes sense. Morgan Elspeth being because we think she's a night sister, but I'm curious about Shin, what her connection could be to yeah. that place. Is and of she, course, uh... this is where the skeleton crew kids are supposed to end up in Makes their sense. show. I, we think there's going to be a big connection. you got to somehow <laughs> sell skeleton crew. It'll be that meme. You know the meme that everyone uses from Umbrella Academy? With the one car driving one way and the other car dri- <laughs> It'll be Ahsoka and Sabine leaving and there goes the skeleton crew yeah. kids flying in. It makes sense. You can totally <laughs> see it's it. It's the meme right there. Here are the rumors on how the world between worlds is supposed to be functioning in this show. That it is going to be featured and it's kind of going to be a glimpse of Ahsoka in other times and eras. Like walking down a corridor and catching a bunch of glimpses of alternate futures for herself yeah or- seeing her in her late teens seeing the final moments of her in rebels it's going to be past and possibly present and or future just different variations of her life well kind of what we saw with ezra to a degree though he saw mm-hmm. actual events he didn't see anything that didn't happen or did he no because he saw his parents too he did well, that was what kind of palpatine showed him so yeah ahsoka is going to supposedly fight darth vader or Hayden Christensen. Again. We don't know if he's going to be in the suit Same. or not yet, because they say that he's been Hayden's been training for the sequence, that he might have been seen wearing his Mustafar robes. It's kind of going to be trying to showcase outcomes of Ahsoka's life and how, no matter what, they lead to a particular moment in her story. It's showing that if she returned to the Jedi Order, she would be the one fighting Vader on Mustafar, having the high ground, not Obi-Wan, and kind of showing how her life would have been had she been there instead of Obi-Wan. Wait, she's going to have the high ground and have beat Anakin? 
Is that we, what you're implying? Because you can't I, beat I don't, the high no, ground. I don't think she'll beat... What if, what if Anakin had the high ground over Ahsoka? Oh, I think there's actually supposed to be... One of the visions is Obi-Wan having the low ground. <laughs> <laughs> don't try it, Obi-Wan. But there's supposed to be a bunch of sequences and visions like this. We're going to see another sequence where Ahsoka killed Thrawn and Ezra didn't need to use the Purgle. These are all kind of supposed to show Ahsoka that her destiny will remain the same. Do you think this confuses the hell out of the casual fan? Yes. Because I'm already confused and I know exactly what's going on Yeah, here. it's just supposed to be some sort of a sequence to show Ahsoka... No, I get it, yeah. ...that her destiny has to be something she has to embrace and not run from or constantly hold in regret. Yeah, I get it. I mean, I think that's a good way to start out because you're given the history lesson. Mm-hmm. You're kind of introducing the world between worlds. You're, you're, you're putting a lot on the plate of the casual, but you're kind of... You're giving them a lot to feast on, but I think that's the way to do it. Just kind of, here it is. This is this is important stuff. Mm-hmm. This explains who Ahsoka is, her attachment to Anakin. She had this world between worlds thing. Chew on it and let's go. Yeah. Ezra and Sapine are supposed to be having action scenes together. By action, I mean fighting. Don't give me that look. What? I didn't even... <laughs> yeah, you did. I, honestly, I didn't do you said something. They're saying Ezra's going to be using the Force in a new way. That he's going to be... Kind of like he developed his own martial arts based force powers, kind of like the ones that are in the Acolyte trailer. We totally didn't pirate. No, that we didn't put a link to in the no. description if you want to go check it out on back, that video. Back then, yeah. No, I just in the, the other day I put it on there. Oh, you did? Yeah. Nice. If it's still there, I it's don't know. Probably, who knows? It might be gone again. Yeah. But yeah, he's supposed to be kind of like how in the Acolyte um, Trinity is using the force. It's not. In the Matrix. It's weird that they would have Trinity doing, like, Matrix stuff in Star Wars. I love Wars, it, though. It's great. Well, we're supposed to get Keanu Reeves in there, too. And that we're is, not I think talk- that we're one talking is con- about Ahsoka, though. I know, but, I mean, that is, like, confirmed, I think, that he did film a, a Maybe scene, they just have shot. to be together at this point. I don't it's know. It's really the Matrix, and they I have want, to be the ones. I want him to be a holocron mm. of Revan. Please. That's all. He just has to pop up. We just have to see him, and that's it. I know. Okay, so he's got his own martial arts force powers. They're going to continue with that connection he has to the animals. Like, he has a connection to the living force, and yep. they're kind of going to roll that into his on-screen fighting. So the he's going like, to use animals and do martial arts? Yeah, maybe. That sounds kind of interesting. While Sabine will continue to fight with his lightsaber. Is he going to say, I know Kung Fu at any no, point? No, he will not. Okay. But they're going to be using this to beat up undead stormtroopers. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yes. Yep. Yep. Yes. Yep. It's happening. It's happening. <laughs> Force karate, undead stormtroopers, I'm there. Dave. They're saying I, that he's I going to have... I said at the beginning, it. I believe in you, Dave. Don't let me down. There's going to be an army of resurrected, by dark side shadow magic, stormtroopers. I mean, we haven't seen that before, so... Yes, this is a standard it's Night's not, Sister yeah. thing. It's How about standard? I don't know if that's like in the standard I think it package, is. Isn't there but... standard... Marin could do it. Yeah, but Marin was Marin was very powerful. Let's be, uh, let's be real about it. She didn't have the kind of training that Mother Towson did. No, she didn't. But yeah, we're gonna we're gonna have some undead coming back via sure. the uh, Nightlight Sisters. <laughs> Just don't call them that. Oh. Yeah, Thrawn supposedly will have a whole army of them. There's supposed to be some Zabrak troopers also in white and burgundy uniforms. Zabrak troopers? Well, they are kind of. They're connected with Light Sisters, Night Sisters. <laughs> light Night, yeah, Night, light, 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 whatever. Light sisters. They say that Morgan Elsbeth was supposedly, during the Mandalorian times, extracting resources from the planet to build a ship capable of bringing Thrawn back to the core worlds. And then, even even people who've been up to us with us to this point may want to click away because we do have what could be a spoiler for the ending. We're talking oh, last episode. I don't even know this one. No, you don't know this one, but I'm putting another an additional spoiler a upon spoiler, spoiler warning. Double spoiler because warning. Because I don't want anyone to be caught totally on a, off guard for this. So three, two, one, goodbye. <laughs> Do come back. <laughs> I don't. I don't want to ruin it for people. No. Okay. Let's let's hear this double spoiler. Okay. The ending. Ahsoka is basically going to end kind of similar to Empire Strikes Back. It's going to be the Empire Strikes Back of the Mando era, okay, where the good guys fail in the end. Ahsoka and Sabine kind of on their secondary mission to stop Grand Admiral Thrawn and his cronies from returning to the core of the galaxy. Well, they're going to fail. Well, and to Thrawn's fail. going to return to the main galaxy at the climax of the eighth and final episode of the season with his forces laid out before him. He will revel in the moment, promising a reckoning is coming, and he'll be ready to take on the faltering New Republic and take back the galaxy. Yeah. 
That's no surprise. Going to leave us off with a lovely cliffhanger ending. To be picked up where? That's the question. In season two, supposedly. Well, let's hope so. Yeah. Let's hope so. But it will set up things heading for a grand movie thing. But I think Thrawn coming back, why would the New Republic, if they're seeing him coming back, why are they still decommissioning the military? <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> we can take care of him. But they're saying this is probably some of the stuff that's going to lead to the rise of the First Order. Because mm-hmm. First Order ends up with a like a treaty with the New Republic. They An do have this, First yeah. Order space. They do. This could be something that Thrawn carves out for them. Yes. Maybe. Probably. Yeah. I mean, it probably is all connected, right? Yes. And a fun thing to keep in mind is Rosario Dawson's favorite episode, she has stated, is number five. Sabine's favorite episode is number one. Shin's favorite episode is number six. Well, we know Shin <laughs> lives for a while. Unless she likes the episodes where she's not in it anymore. Maybe she does. Maybe that's the ending she dies Sabine's in and she thinks she has first, a grand huh? ending. Sabine says yes. Natasha Louis Berdizo said episode one is her favorite, while Rosario's is five and Ivana's was six. They're not talking about like the the movies, are they? Because then she's really cool if she mm. likes six the most. No. <laughs> but that is it. That is the compilation of both rumors and a little bit of facts going into Ahsoka. And a little bit of ramble. <laughs> With you it's never a little. <laughs> no, I'm excited. I, I can't I am like I said at the start. I'm I'm pretty excited about this one. I I have a lot of confidence, and uh, don't let me down, Dave. We don't need Nightlight Sisters and (laughs) the New Beyond, the Dead Stormtroopers and the New Beyond. But we'll see. All right, for now, that's going to be all we got for you this time. Now it's your turn to take to the comments below and tell us what you think about all of this. Are you excited for Ahsoka? Are you skeptical, or what? Whatever the case may be, leave those comments below. Let's talk some Star Wars. And until next time, thanks for watching.